Hi, I'm Conrad Barabe. You may remember me from such video clips as Beekeeper with his hair on fire and Beekeeper whose smoker's gone out being chased by wild bees. <laughs> Um, my name is Conrad Bader Bay. Those aren't real video clips that I just mentioned. But <laughs> what I'm going to do uh, now is demonstrate, I hope, uh, one of the most difficult aspects of beekeeping. How to start the smoker. smoker. Um, the, I the ideal, in, uh, if, if such is available, is to, is to use some embers from a fire, which are already uh, glowing hot, because uh, those will those will keep going pretty well. And uh, uh, what you want to use is fuel. Uh, it's always a good idea to get it started with something that'll, uh, with some good tinder, paper, uh, corn husk hair works real well. And uh, aged coconut hulls and husks uh, make an excellent source of fuel, as does uh, dry manure. Uh, wet manure is pretty hard to keep going. <laughs> um, uh, but you want to, uh, you know, small small sticks of wood uh, will will burn for a long time if you can get them to catch. But the problem with that is they burn real hot, and uh, you can actually blow flames into your hive if you're not careful. So uh, if you are using wood, it's it's always a good idea to um, to uh, stick some some green herbage in the mouth of your smoker. This is kind of the the residue from the old from the old herbage I had in there, and that'll catch any any uh, hot sparks that uh, might blow out of the mouth of the smoker and uh, that'll keep you from singeing your bees or yourself. Um, so, uh, I'm just gonna get this piece of paper, get this paper wadded up. Okay, so I'm just gonna build like a little, uh, your standard fire teepee on the, uh, on the inside here. Is going to uh, hopefully ignite ignite that. Got little pieces of kindling and tinder down there, uh, and I'll be adding little pieces of wood and other combustible materials such as dried grass. Uh, some of the things that you want to avoid using as fuel are things like. Uh, uh, oily, oily rags, or uh, painted, painted wood, or pieces of uh, painted cardboard, because uh, that'll produce noxious fumes that'll um, that can poison your bees. Uh, some of the other things that you want to avoid using are uh, things like uh, mango, mango leaves, uh, which which uh, produce uh, a smoke that is irritating both to bees. And to humans, you can actually uh, irritate your eyes, and that can be a skin irritant. Uh, the reason the reason that we're uh, using the smoke in the first place does a couple of things. Uh, one, as I will be demonstrating further, uh, as the uh, as the smoke gets going, is um, you can use the smoke to uh, to cover up your your scent. Uh, bees are very uh, olfactory oriented, meaning that they, they use uh, scent and taste to uh, sense their environment to a very great degree. And uh, so one of the main, main ways of keeping yourself protected from the bees is to make yourself the equivalent of invisible, which I guess would be unsmellable, uh, by uh, by covering your covering your own scent, uh, and the other thing, just a little bit of herbage in the, in the mouth there, and down on the uh, sparks. And the other thing the smoke the smoke does is uh, it will induce the bees to start eating their honey in preparation to leave their hive if the smoke leads to flame. Uh, it's a defense mechanism that they've developed. They'll start to tank up on the honey in preparation to, to leave in case, uh, uh, in case of a grass fire, which has been a challenge that they've evolved with. 
and uh, in the absence of the actual flames, the smoke will just make them, as I mentioned, consume the honey, which makes their abdomens distend. They get all they get all kind of uh, wonky from from eating so much. They feel very sluggish, and they won't fly off the comb so much. And uh, with their with their abdomens all big and distended, they can't get their abdomens uh, in position to uh, to sting quite as easily as they as they might otherwise. And um, the last usage of smoke kind of goes back to the first thing I mentioned of, of covering over odors. Uh, if you if you are stung, it uh, is quite helpful to after removing the sting to blow a little smoke uh, at the sting site because if not, uh, other bees will be incited and excited to to uh, be attracted to that same location and continue to sting you there in that same spot. So. Uh, Looks like the smoker may stay lit. <laughs> Famous last words. So, uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, start smoking the hive, and uh, then we'll open her up.